Hello family and welcome to church today. My name is Jacqueline and I am our Toto graduate. And my name is James Skinner and I serve here at Watoto as the team leader for global support. Hi, I'm Ronald from Watoto. Hey everybody, my name is Lucky. Hi, my name is Daisy. And my name is Elana. I am so thankful for my sponsor. I thank God for school. I am so thankful for Watoto. I'm thankful for my mom. She's the best. And we are thankful for friends. Thank you for loving Watoto. If this is the first time you're joining us, you're so welcome. We're so excited to have you here. We'd love to hear from you. So why don't you send us a quick email to connect at watotochurch.com. Parents, we have not forgotten about you. We have teaching materials tailor-made for your children. So visit our website, watotochurch.com forward slash kids for your little ones and watotochurch.com forward slash youth and young adults for your teenagers. In just a few moments, we're going to be led in worship by the Watoto Worship Academy. I'm so excited about this. Through the Academy, these young students are being equipped and discipled to become the next generation of worship leaders. And they're going to grow up and they're going to serve their local church. But today we get to be a part of that. It's so exciting. But before we meet them, we've got a special message from some of our really good friends from around the world. Muli Wotia, Watoto family. My name is Anna and I'm the country director of Watoto Germany in Switzerland. I'm so glad to be part of the Watoto family and miss you all. I send you all the best greetings from Germany and sunshine and hope you all well, stay safe and be blessed. Bye! Hi! Hi. Watoto family! Greetings from the Watoto office in Brazil. Hi, I'm Lauren Hamlin, country director with Watoto Canada. From all of your Watoto family here, we love you and may God richly bless you. Hey! My name is Paul, and I send you greetings from the Watoto Netherlands office. Today's going to be a great day. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Tara. And Watoto family, we want to bring you warm greetings from everybody in the UK this morning. Hello from Watoto, USA. Hello from the Watoto, Norway office. Hello from the Watoto, Asia office. Hello from the Australian country office. Hello from Uganda. This is the Uganda Support Office and we want to welcome you to our Toto Weekend. Enjoy the celebration. Welcome to church. We are so glad that you chose to worship with us today. Are you ready to worship Jesus? Come on, put your hands together like this, everybody.
that you chose to worship Jesus with us today. My name is Raymond. And I'm part of the Auto to Worship Academy. Psalm 113 verse 7 says, The Lord raises the poor from the dead and takes the helpless from the ashes. And you know what? That's what God has done in my life. I didn't have the privilege to grow up with both of my parents. I was abandoned as a child and left in the trash. But just like God says that He has a plan for us, God never let His hand to go away from me. I was rescued and brought to a total which has been my family, my home for the last years friends maybe your story is similar to mine or perhaps life has got you wondering if God really cares about you I am here to remind you that God loves you he has a special plan for your life he says that he will never leave you neither will he forsake you he is a good father and a good shepherd to us. So join with me when I just sing this song and let's lift the name of Jesus high. Come on, let's sing. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want.
our young adults from the Watoto Worship Academy for leading us in such a great worship experience. That last song just reminds me of the scripture that says, Behold, what manner of love that the Father, our Father God, has lavished on us by calling us children of God, sons and daughters, and that's who we are. And because you're a child of God, He cares about you. He cares about your needs. All you need to do is to ask, and you will receive is to seek and you will find, and is to knock at heaven's door, your Father's door in heaven, and He will answer your prayers. Wow, great worship experience. Well, if you're joining us online or on air, we want to welcome you to our Watoro Church service. And today is a special weekend where we get to focus on the work that we do in caring for community. Now, before we hear the message today, I'm really excited that our founders and team leaders, Pastors Gary and Marilyn Skinner, have a special message for us. Well, welcome to Watoto Church Online. I know we're going to have a great service, and I'm glad that you decided to be a part of it. Welcome. It was almost 37 years ago that Gary and I moved to Kampala to begin with Toto, and the last three decades has been a journey of faith. It's been a journey of miracles. God has been so good to us. We've seen tens of thousands of people transformed by the power of the good news, by the power of Jesus Christ. But we've also seen an entire nation transformed as those transformed lives went into their community with the culture and the character of Jesus Christ. Wow. You know, at Witoto, we love to say, church is not an event you go to. It's a family you belong to. And today, we have a global family, a family all around the world. So we want to welcome you. If you've joined us today from Australia, from North America, South America, Europe, wherever you've joined us from, we are so glad that you are part of our family. It's been an amazing 37 years. We've watched God do some terrific things as he's helped Watata Church become the kind of church that he's called us to be. He's called us to reach out to the most vulnerable in our community and give them hope, to preach the gospel and transform their lives. And so we've been able to rescue over 5,000 little boys and girls who are orphaned as a result of tragedy in their lives. We've been able to go up to Gulu and reach out to that war-torn community and reach boys and girls who are forced to be child soldiers, help them regain their lives. We've gone up into Juba, South Sudan, into that war-torn nation, and we're a part of rebuilding that beautiful city and that nation. And of course, we're reaching out to the most vulnerable women in our community who are struggling to raise their children, so desperate. That's the kind of church God wants us to be. I'm glad you're a part of it. But we could have never done that if it wasn't for our family of sponsors all around the world. And we want to thank you so much for your faithfulness. It's been challenging times that we've lived in these past few months with this global pandemic, but our sponsors have stuck with us. That's how we know that you're a family. So on behalf of the thousands of children, the thousands of women, the communities that have been in distress, we want to say a heartfelt thank you so much. We're continuing with our series today, Transforming Culture. Jesus said that we were to go into all the world and we were to make disciples of the nations, teaching them to obey everything that he commanded us. He wants us to transform nations by developing the culture and the character of Christ. And we're to live that out. And today we're gonna to talk about transforming culture by becoming a culture of compassion. You know, the shortest verse in the Bible, it's in John 11, verse 35, it simply says this, Jesus wept. Do you know why Jesus cried? Because he came to the home of his friend Lazarus, and Lazarus had died, and the family was going through trauma. And when Jesus saw their trauma, their pain, he wept. That's the heart of Jesus. That's the heart of God. The Bible also tells us Jesus, when he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. That's Jesus. That's who he is. We sing a song at Watata Church about the compassion of God. He's gracious. He's, he's slow to anger. He's full of compassion. He's good to all. 
He's compassionate to all that he made. That's God. And whatever God is like, he wants us to be. And so today, we want to talk about that. Being moved by the plight of people around us, developing a culture of compassion that helps us also to be good to other people. I'm glad you decided to join us today. Welcome. We're going to have a great service. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Gary and Marilyn, for sharing those words of encouragement. It's always great to hear from you. We love you so, so much. Now, today is a very, very special weekend here at Watoto, where we get to celebrate what we do in caring for community. And I'm going to have a conversation with Eddie, and it's going to be awesome. By the way, Eddie and I went to the same high school, That's right. went to the same faculty at university, Makerere University, and now we get to serve Jesus here at Watoto. It's such a joy to serve with you. Some exciting things happening here at Watoto, Eddie. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last week, two of our choirs returned home from the USA and Brazil, yeah. and it's such a joy to have our children back. Thank you all, family, for praying and giving towards our children. That's right. And talking about the children, this evening at 7 p.m., we are going to have a concert by our Watoto Children's Choirs. Now, note this. It is pre-recorded, but it is anointed, and it's going to be on all our platforms, on Watoto Church Online, on our Facebook platform, but also you can watch this concert live at 7 p.m. on Family TV. You are going to be blessed. Tell somebody about it. That's right. It's going to be powerful. So we are carrying on our series, Culture Transformation. And today we want to talk about a very important culture, and that is a culture of compassion. God is a God of compassion. You can see that all through the Bible. In fact, God required the children of Israel to be compassionate if they were going to be blessed. They were to take care of the foreigners who were living in their land. They were to take care of the orphans and the widows. And when they did that, God would bless them. Jesus, when he was on earth, he was moved with compassion when he saw people in suffering. He cared about them. Biblical compassion is actually love and mercy in action where one steps out of their way so they can help another in a time of need. And we've all experienced compassion in one way or another, either from a friend or family member, relative. It could have even been your teacher or even a stranger. And you know how that act of compassion changed your life, either directly or indirectly. I think of my own story. My dad was orphaned at a very young age. But it took relatives that came alongside him to educate him, and today he's a professor. And I'm so thankful that he extended that compassion by raising us to be incredible children. And so we are so thankful for this gift of compassion in community. The unfortunate thing, Eddie, is that today, this culture of compassion is being eroded mm. very slowly in, in community, in society. More and more people are self-centered and selfish. They don't want to care about other people. But we also see a number of people who are taking advantage of the vulnerable instead of caring for them. But we need to change this. We need to embrace genuine compassion, this culture of compassion, so we can build a healthy community. Because a culture of biblical compassion changes lives. And I want to read a story quickly, Eddie, and we're going to jump into it. It's a popular story found in Luke chapter 10, where Jesus gives a parable of the Good Samaritan. I'm, I'm going to read from verse 25, and here's what it says. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded by asking him what is written in the law. And how do you read it? How do you interpret it? This teacher of the law answered and said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied and said, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But this expert in the law wanted to justify himself. 
So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Very important question. In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he also passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, and he brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Then Jesus asked, which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him, the one who exercised compassion. Jesus told him, go and do it. Likewise. What an amazing story. Yeah, that's a very powerful story. And Jules, you know, as we talk about culture transformation, in this story I see Jesus changing the culture of the people in the day. Because the context of this story is so amazing. We must understand the relationship between the Jews and the Samaritans. They never got along. They never loved each other. And here Jesus tells a story of a Samaritan who was an enemy to the Jew who stepped across racial barriers and loved his enemy. Jesus was teaching the Jews then and is teaching all of us that we must respond to the pain of the people around us, no matter who they are. You know, it's very easy to care for the people that we love, but what about your enemy? In this place, Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter who that person is, friend or enemy, we must respond with compassion whenever anybody is in pain. That's right. Now, there are lots of p- things that we can learn uh, from, um, from this amazing story, but the first thing is compassion responds to pain. True. You see, friends, pain is personal. Pain is real. And right now, you could be going through pain or you have just come out of pain, and the truth of life is we all experience pain because we live in a broken world. But what makes us go through the pains in this life is people around us who respond to us with compassion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jules, as a a young man, um, I lost my parents at the age of seven years. And I went from family to family. And I went through a painful experience as um, I was abused physically, verbally. But in the same season, there are people who came alongside me to take care of me. They saw my pain and responded with compassion and they took care of me until when I was at university. And I am where I am today because God worked through people to respond with compassion to my pain. Because compassion is so important to alleviate the pains of the people around us. Mm. Compassion responds to pain. And this is our story as Watoto Church. We say we care for community, and I'm reminded about how Watoto Child Care Ministry started in the, in the 90s. Uganda in the 80s was hit by HIV AIDS and leaving lots of children who were parentless. They would be found on the streets uh, begging for food to leave. And God spoke to our team leaders, Gary and Marilyn, and he told them, take care of my children. Right. And God used many verses, but two verses are so critical to the work that we're doing to care for the vulnerable. And the first one is James 1:27 that says, Religion that our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. That's the first one. And the second one is this. is in Psalm 68, verse 5 and 6. And it says, A father to the fatherless 
a defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. And God sets the lonely in families. Wow. wow. God loves the orphan and the widow. That's right. And he uses his people to do this work of caring for them. And so far as we're total, we have had the privilege of caring for over 5,000 boys and girls through childcare, but also we've gone alongside vulnerable women, about 5,000 women as well. And today, I just want to brag about our total family. Thank you so much for caring for the needy in the communities. You know, uh, recently we have been hit by the COVID uh, pandemic, right. and many church members have cared for church folk, but also members of the community, because compassion responds to the pain. And I want to encourage you to look out for people in pain in your community yep. and take care of them. Yep. Compassion truly responds to pain, like you have said, Eddie. That's very powerful. The other thing I see in this story, Eddie, is that compassion not only responds to pain, but also goes the extra mile. Wow. It goes the extra mile. What did this good Samaritan do? He stopped, went down, did care for the pain of this man that was hit by robbers, but then he didn't stop there. This man couldn't walk. He picked up this man, put him on his donkey, went the extra mile of taking him to a safe place, paid for the safe place, and even paid for the treatment. Wow. And he didn't stop there. He said, I'm going to pass by. He followed up. He went the extra mile wow. to make sure that this man was doing great. You know what I get from that, Eddie? That compassion is not about handouts. It's about giving a hand up. Wow. When God called us to plant a church in Gulu, and uh, uh, I remember uh, Marilyn particularly went up and met with some of the district leaders in Gulu, and so she said to them, we were wanting to come as Watoto, to uh, plant a church and be involved in the healing of Gulu town, mm -hmm. which was just coming out of the LRA war. And one of the leaders turned to Marilyn and said, I hope you're not going to be like all these other organizations that come here, give us blankets and sweets, take pictures, and they are gone. Because compassion is not about handouts. Wow. And we said, no, we are actually coming to be a part of the community. We are going to establish a church and be part of the life in Gulu. Because compassion goes the extra mile. What do we do with the vulnerable children and orphans that God gives into our hands? We don't just rescue them from difficulty, from pain, like you said, but we take the extra mile of raising them to be leaders. We give them the best food that they could get, offer them a great housing. We put them in families, like right. you said. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, we give them the best education that they could ever afford. Why? So that they become great leaders that would transform our nation. We go the extra mile. It's not just about food and clothes. Mm. What do we do with the women that God allows us to reach out to? We do this through a total neighborhood. We embrace them, tell them they are loved. Wow. But we go the extra mile. We empower them train them literacy skills. We find out their giftings and train them to do things with their hands so that they can begin to be productive themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we engage with them. I think of the story of two ladies, Resty and Justine, who are in Bunga, one of the communities here, who came through a total neighborhood and they received this love, this compassion. But guess what today? They are extending that compassion right in their communities. They're caring for 60 other women. Wow. That's amazing. Because you know what? Compassion goes the extra mile. You said it. We do it through our small groups. They get from their pockets to care for community. Biblical compassion, my friends, changes lives. That's right. And it's a culture we need to embrace as society. We shouldn't just do things as random acts of compassion just to ease our conscience that we've done something. No, we got to commit to see that the people we care for actually have their dignity restored, actually become productive people because compassion goes the extra mile. So a culture of compassion is a way of life 
that changes community. Wow, that is so awesome. Now we've said two things so far, that yeah. compassion responds to pain. Secondly, compassion goes the extra mile to help. And lastly, compassion will be rewarded. Absolutely. Both in this life mm -hmm. and in eternity. Now we don't practice compassion to be rewarded, but it's inevitable whenever you are compassionate, yep. God will reward you because when you are compassionate, you are sowing seeds of love and they become fruitful at the end of the day. You will be rewarded. And Matthew 25 uh, illustrates this uh, principle of compassion being rewarded. In Matthew 25, 34, and this is what Matthew says, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Right. Then the righteous, those who are compassionate, mm -hmm. in this life will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or in need of clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and we came and visited you? Then verse 40, the king will reply, truly, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, right. you did to me. Come on. So every time we saw a seed of compassion. Yep. In a life that is in pain, we are actually doing it to Jesus Definitely. and he will reward us in this life and in eternity. And I don't know about you, but I'm so excited every time I see one of our boys and girls growing up, becoming a productive citizen and a responsible Christian. Sorry. I'm reminded of Little Fred, I call him Little because I remembered him as a little boy. I traveled with him on choir 13 in 2004 in North America. And he used to say, when I grow up, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> Not really a pilot. I want to become a pilot. Right. So Dale Fred has graduated as a pilot. Come on. He is a responsible Christian and productive citizen. And then um, choir 17, I think, we traveled to Australia, Asia, and New Zealand. There was a young man called Fred Erisata. He loved football a lot. We used to play football. And he was Uncle Fred. We used to call him <laughs> Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred. And um, he wanted to become a lawyer. Today, Fred is one of, uh, of the lawyers in a city in Kampala. He is a responsible Christian and productive, productive citizen. citizen. Yeah. And we, as we're told, we are saying we are receiving the rewards of compassion in this life. But remember this, my friend, you will be rewarded for your compassion in eternity by Jesus Amen. himself. Amen. But the greatest act of compassion was demonstrated by God our Father. And God our Father can never ask us to do something he's never done. And we can never outgive God. God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were enemies, he sent Jesus to die for us. You see, friends, Jesus lived a life we should have lived, and he died a death we should have died. And today, my brother, my sister, wherever you are, Jesus is calling you to himself. He has already paid the penalty for your sin, and he wants you to come back home come back into the arms of your creator, your father. He loved you so much. I want to pray for you because I know you need to come to Jesus and receive forgiveness and salvation. Now, if you believe in your heart that you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer right now, wherever you are. Say, Lord Jesus, today I invite you into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I choose to follow you every day of my life. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, the Bible says, you are a child of God. Welcome to the family of God. And we would love to connect with you. Please click the link 
on the message section below because we want to get in touch with you. Now, if you're watching online or you're listening in on air or watching on TV, you can also write to us on this email. Connect at watorochurch.com and one of us will make sure we get in touch with you because we want to make sure that you are part of God's family. Welcome once again. Wow, that was awesome, Eddie. I also add to the welcome and say, hey, you are now a part of the family of God. Congratulations. And I want to challenge the rest of us. Let's embrace this biblical culture of compassion. Compassion changes lives. So we've come to that part of our service where we get to exercise generosity. We get to give. And whenever we give, we're saying, God, we love you. But also we are saying, hey, God, we want to extend your love. We want to extend your compassion to the communities around us. And so get your tithes, get your offerings ready. And we're going to give in just a moment. But I would like to pray for you as you get ready to give. Now, dear Father, I want to thank you so much for the gifts that we're going to give to you, our offerings. We thank you that you take our offerings and use them to multiply your compassion. Now I pray, would you bless everyone that's giving, but also bless the work that we do as Watoto. In Jesus' name, amen. You can give using mobile money, direct bank transfer, or any banking agent within your community. But also, if you live close to any of our celebration points, you can simply walk over and slip your cash offering into one of the gift boxes. Now, for those using mobile money, let me walk you through the steps you would take. For MTN, dial star 165 star 3 hash, and the merchant code is 148775. That is star 165 star 3 hash, and the merchant code is 148 Seven seven five, and for Airtel, you dial star one eight five star four star nine hash, and the business number is seven hundred thousand. That is seven followed by five zeros. Again, it's star one eight five star four star nine hash, and the business number is seven followed by five zeros. For more giving options, check out our website, watotochurch.com forward slash give. But you can also use your phone to scan the QR code, which will take you straight to the different giving options. And for your Watoto Child sponsorship, dial star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. Then enter the merchant code WCCM in capital letters. Again, that is star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. The merchant code is WCCM in capital letters. Now as a reference, type the sponsor's full name only. Fill in the amount to be paid and finally fill in your MTN mobile money pin. Thank you for your generosity.
Thank you for joining us for church today. We hope you've been blessed. If you'd like to catch up on some previous sermons or to find out more information on giving options, visit our website at www.watotochurch.com. For prayer and counseling, please call the number you see on your screen or send us an email to connect at watotochurch.com. And remember, the Watoto Children's Choir are performing tonight on air and online at 7 p.m. sharp. Don't miss it. That's right, James. I'll be watching. I hope to see you there. Have a great week.